Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that international efforts and cooperation should be unified for solving the crisis in Syria. And hundreds of Syrians gather in front of the United Nations building in Geneva to express their support to the motherland Syria, its army, and Syria's official delegation to Geneva too. And Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Armed Forces, Defense Minister Major General Jassim Milifrej, affirms that Aleppo will be liberated fully from the armed forces groups. Good afternoon. This is using English from the Senior Art Division in Damascus. Vice Prime Minister, Foreign and Expatriates Minister, head of the Syria's official delegation to Geneva II Conference, Walid Al Muallim, said that talks with the coalition delegation, the so-called opposition, for this week in Geneva did not lead to any tangible outcomes. Al Muallim said at a press conference in Geneva that was for two reasons, the non-seriousness and non-ripeness of the other side, its threat of blowing up the meetings many times, its stubbornness on one issue as if we come here for one hour to hand them over everything and return, and this indicates the illusions they live. He added that the second reason was the tense atmosphere through which the U.S. wanted to cover Geneva meeting by its actual appearance and its flagrant intervention in the meeting, particularly in directing the other side since opening session till its decision of armament. Al Muallim added that the official delegation came to Geneva open to everything and agreed on discussing everything, but it seemed that the other side did not read Geneva one statement and has been programmed for one item. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that international efforts and cooperation should be unified for solving the crisis in Syria. In his speech at the Security Conf Conference held in Munich, Lavrov said that the crisis in Syria caused the emergence of terrorism, calling for expanding the opposition delegation in the upcoming round of talks. Hundreds of Syrians gathered in front of the United Nations headquarters in Geneva to express their support to Syria, its army, and Syria's official delegation representing the Syrian Arab Republic in Geneva II conference. Their participants expressed the rejection of terrorism backed by regional and international countries. Information Minister Amran Zabi told the participants in the march that the next round of dialogue should include all spectra of the national opposition, with which we agree regarding the love of the homeland and drawing its future. The ministers stressed that the Syrian official delegation taking part in the conference will never give up on the Syrian sovereignty and the coalition delegation knows well that there is no one Syrian who can give up upon a single drop of soil from the Syrian territories. For her part, presidential, political and media advisor Buthena Shaban affirmed that Syria is for all Arabs and for the world's freedom fighters, adding that the secret of its strength lies behind its great people and it did not and won't abandon any of its or Arab rights. Dr. Bashar al-Jafari also addressed the participants saying, we conveyed your voice into the hall of dialogue and told them who wants to know what the Syrian people want should go outside the meeting hall to see the gathering people. Deputy Foreign and Expatriates Minister Faisal Maqdad said that the Syrian people are against terrorism and want restoration of security, adding that Syria has been steadfast due to the people's continued support to President Bashar al-Assad. The Syrian government since the beginning of the crisis was keen to give humanitarian aid to everyone in need in every spot of the Syrian soil without any distinguish between any area over the other or citizen over the other. The Syrian official delegation in Geneva too emphasized that the Syrian government doesn't prefer an area to another, showing that the humanitarian aid enters all places, not only homes as humanitarian aid was being delivered to all areas a year ago as a plan between Syria and the UN. Adding that delivering aids to any place in Syria during the current circumstances has nothing to do with Geneva. 
It is an agreement signed between the Syrian government and the UN two years ago. Whereas there is a number of areas which are still under terrorist control and suffering from horrible conditions with lack of food and medical tools due to continuous clashes which prevent the humanitarian aid from being delivered into these places. We distribute all the aids we receive from the Red Crescent organization. Distribution includes all citizens from all Syrian areas. We try to offer the best service to citizens. We ensure the requirements of all families through distributing food packages. I am from Aleppo. We receive everything from this center. I came here last summer. I fled my house in Al-Qadam and came here without anything. Over the past year and a half, they helped me with all possible things, including food and blankets. Uh, I am Riyad Hamzi from Al Qusayr. I have been displaced along with my family. Four members of my family fell martyrs. I registered in this center and received aid several times. I deeply thank the staff of the center. I am from Aleppo. I registered in this center from the beginning of the crisis and received food packages and blankets several times. I was displaced from my house in Al Qaboom. I deeply thank the staff of the center who offer best services to us. I registered in the center a year and a half ago. The center is excellent as it gives us all possible aid. We opened the center a year and a half ago and we received displaced citizens from all Syrian areas to offer them various aids and requirements. Another center was recently opened to meet the needs of other displaced. The Syrian government is still assisting the impacted people and those who were obliged to leave their homes from any area without exceptions as it provides food, cleaning stuff and blankets, in addition to kitchen tools and baby's diapers, benefiting more than 4,100 affected families from many places. As part of the peaceful popular initiative to resolve the crisis near Muki Fiji camp and with the support of the Syrian government, a new shipment of aid was delivered into the camp to elevate the suffering of locals besieged by terrorists by terrorists there. Head of the Palestinian Popular Reconciliation Committee, Mohammed al said that 980 food baskets or packages have been delivered to Yermuk camp and distributed among the families in it. He noted that the Palestinian Popular Committees also evacuated 150 persons, including sick women and elderly people, who were rushed to Damascus hospitals for treatment. al Omari said that earlier... 1,145 food baskets were delivered to locals in the camp and seven people were evacuated despite the terrorist attacks on popular committees while delivering food baskets. He lauded the facilitations and steps taken by the government to help deliver aid to the camp. Vice Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Armed Forces, Defense Minister Major General Fahel Jassim al Fraj yesterday visited a number of army sites in Aleppo province. During the visit, Major General al Fraj relayed the greetings of President Bashar al-Assad, the Commander-in-Chief, to soldiers and his pride in their heroic and sacrifices for the sake of restoring security and stability to Syria. He asserted that the Syrian people, armed forces and leaders are bigger than the massive international conspiracy targeting Syria, lauding the soldiers of the army for their victories, which resulted in freeing several areas in Aleppo from terrorists, most notably Aleppo International Airport and its surrounding areas. Competent authorities in cooperation with seized a car loaded with bombs and explosives, about 100 kilos of high explosives in one of Damascus neighborhoods. While the engineering units dismantled it and the concerned bodies did the appropriate investigations related to that.
while pursuing terrorist remnants in a little neighborhood of Damascus countryside. Security forces in cooperation with a unit of the Syrian Arab army seized a number of wanted criminals. On the other hand, terrorists were eliminated in Khan Shih and the surrounding farms were as units of the Syrian army clashed with terrorists in Daraya Yabrud, Ras Al Ain, and Khadra Al Sarkha and Jabadin. Also in Adra, they eliminated terrorists of what is called the Islamic Front in At Tawassa area. Moving to Lebanon, where security forces of Akkar seized two Syrian terrorists among a group while the other terrorists fleed. The Lebanese National Media Agency said that a patrol from the Regional Directorate of the State Security has seized two Syrians in Khirbet el a border village, as they were referred to the concerned court to continue investigations, in addition to another Syrian citizens, which all were trapped in North Lebanon. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syriaonline.sy. Now to the latest in business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break. <laughs>